Good morning. This is Beth Lane from the Math Science Innovation Center back with another weekly web find. I have a special guest here with me today, Mr. Andrew Dare. Go ahead and say hi to everybody. Hey everybody, how are you doing? Welcome. So recently we did a weekly web find on Desmos, the online math tool, and there were so many features that we were going over and sharing, and we've gotten some feedback to see if we could dive into that activity builder section a little bit more. So if you could walk us through some more ways to start using that, that would be great. Sure, sure. There's, there's so much I can show you. So let me um, jump over here and show you what everything is here. Right now, I am in teacher.desmos.com. And I'm logged in as me, Andrew Dare. And one of my favorite is the starter screens right here. And if you click on this, it actually shows you collections that Desmos has created for us to be able to start doing our own activities. So if you want to be like, oh, I don't know where to start. I got this blank screen and I'm not sure where to begin. Well, you can start here. These are already pre-built and all you have to do is adjust them for whatever you want to do. So go ahead, Beth. I, I like how they're sectioned out. Some are just for checking in on your kids, some for checking understanding. I see fraction task. I know that's that's a popular skill that we yep. constantly work on with our students. And then screen remixes. I'm curious about that one. So if you, and I've already got that one open because that's one of my faves. So I will click on that. So Popular Remixes has some of the more frequently used screens that teachers uh, tend to grab when they start an activity. This one has a lot of linear equations and linear inequalities. So if I wanted to, let's just say I wanted my students to practice, I can actually say, all right, I'm going to open this up and put all these things into my activity builder. Popular Screen Remixes has a lot of screens that teachers use as they're building their activities. In order to do that, all you have to do is click up here on the dots and hit copy and edit. Now, if you click on this and this is not highlighted or not highlightable, it's grayed out, all you have to do is go to teacher.desmos.com slash labs mm -hmm. and you can, you have to turn on what's called your computation layer. Once you do that, you pop back over here, hit a refresh and it'll show up and then you just hit copy and edit. Okay, and I've I see they that. point that out right there for you, too. And mm -hmm. I like that you can get different translations. So if you wanted French, Spanish, or Russian, I see you have those options there, too. That's great. I actually opened up the popular remixes, and there were all kinds of stuff. Now, here's one up here that I brought up to the top to show you. This is a calculus one. Well, I'm not doing that. I'm doing linear stuff with my students, so I need to get rid of this. If I just click on these three dots up here, I can actually hit delete screen. And it'll say, are you sure? And I say, yep. And there we go. I like that it gives you that extra verification. So if you don't accidentally hit on it, it's gone. Now, it looks similar to like when I'm doing a PowerPoint or a flip chart over there. Can you just click and drag your slides if you wanted to change the order of them? Oh, yeah. I okay. actually can just go like this. And there we okay. go. Now it's number two. And I have this one as number one. It's very nice. Okay. Yep. What this shows is parts of the slide or of the screen. This one has a graph, it has, this is actually a note, and then you have a button, and then you also have the ability to put in answers. And so you can do different things with that as the students go. But I, I just kind of wanted to have an introduction, so I say, you know, here's what we have. These slides give students a chance to work on linear equations. So can you add your own original slides to this one that you have captured or, you know, copied and edit? Can you still add your own? And I saw we could delete. Yes, you can. You can actually just come over here and click on this little plus down here at the bottom and you hit that and it'll put up a new one and you can add your own title. All right. So and say, so I can choose to put in my own graphs, tables, sketches. So I can just put in answering Beth's question. And there we go. I have a new slide. Awesome. I say media, so we could put in pictures and videos. I could choose multiple yep. choice or open-ended. Very nice. Right. And you get to put in one of each of these. So okay. if you want to put in a sketch, you can put in a sketch, and then you can put in a media source or a note, and then you can also have what the students are going to do. So you put okay. one of each in there. 
And if you just do the graph itself, it'll look just like the Desmos calculator. Very nice. But the nice thing is, is that you can go in here and you can edit this if you want, and it gives you some examples of how to edit. Let me see if I can pull this up for you to see. Go over to here, I hit edit graph, and you can see it's got the points here. And so if I'm saying, wow, I want my, I want my students to be able to hit you know, three of these at once, so can I make three of them collinear or something like that? You can actually just come over here and change the ordered pair and it'll change it on there. So if I have, we have one, three, let's say I want to make it one, four, you can see that it jumped this one up here. Okay. And that's all I have to do. And then I hit done and I go back and it's already moved it up. And that could be great because, so this one, it looks like if I wanted to, I could have some positive and negative slopes, but if I just wanted to start with positive slopes, I could kind of gear towards that and edit it, take away anything that might have a negative slope. I like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then if I want to preview, because I'm like, if I'm one of those people, I'm like, I, this is a graph, it's a thing, I don't understand some of this is, just go up here and hit the preview. And it'll actually show you what the students are going to see. And if you want to test it out, you can actually test it out. So that's very beneficial. Beth, what graph do you want to try? Um, let's try y equals x plus three. X plus three. Three and see, is a magical number. And see that submit button highlighted when it was a legitimate equation. And oh, bam, ding. nailed it. We got a coin. Cool. And then we just say add another line and we want to try it again. What do you want to try this time? Um, let's just try y equals x. Y equals x. Okay. And notice if I put a plus in here, it won't let me submit because it's waiting for something after the plus. If I take away the plus, now the submit button says, hey, that's a legitimate equation. We can go ahead and graph it. And you hit submit. Bam, got another one. You're on Very fire. Nice. This is a fun one too. I love this one. It's landing a plane and you have to be able to land on the strip and then you submit the, submit your equation. So if you think about teaching kids and teaching them about linear graphing, you know, they're going to have to know right away that this is going to be a negative slope because if you put, you know, y equals 2x in there and hit submit, well, oh, I just crashed just the plane. Jumped, jumped away. Yeah. It, so it should give them some idea of what to do. And then giving them just that open-endedness, hopefully they'll come to the idea that, oh, if I do negative 2x, well, at least I'm going the right way. And I like that the plane is jumping because it's forcing them to understand that last part of the equation, that y-intercept is your starting point. So if we're starting, it looks like the plane's on 15, so we would need to have that plus 15 in there. Yeah, and, and we can- it some context to that raw equation. I like that. Yep, and then you can just say, okay, let's try that. Oh, okay, well, at least we're nearer to the landing strip. So maybe I just edit my response and I'll try negative X. Well, that got me a lot closer. So now that idea of guess and check can work and then we can ask students what they tried, how they did it, things like that. And they'll be able to figure out, you know, oh, negative means it goes this way. And positive slope means it goes this way. You know, those kind of things are great for kids to, you know, understand and just, solving a worksheet or graphing from a worksheet doesn't always do that for them. Absolutely. So I'm seeing underneath your text box, it says, learn how to type math. What happens That is really cool. That? You click on that and it shows you all the ways to put in different things. So if you just use like down here, you see A over B. If you just use the slash, it will show you the division or make and, it as a fraction. And that's important because I, I hear from students a lot, especially when we don't have the actual division symbol on a key, they're wondering, where's the divide symbol? So connecting that and giving them these little hints right here, this is great. Yep. Here's a linear slalom that they put in an equation and their goal is to try to basically quote unquote ski between uh -huh. the purple markers, the blue markers, and then the red markers. 
to see if they can get one single equation that goes through all of them. I could do something like y equals, um, let's see, let's do 2x plus, I don't know, what do you say, 3? Sure. Three. We used we'll three try earlier that. and it worked. Maybe it'll yeah. work again. Well, we made it through one gate, and I like how the gates gave us some color to give us confirmation that we were successfully between the gates. Right, and now as I go in and edit my response, I can say, oh, well, maybe if I choose five, that'll do something. Oh, wow. So, and going through and doing something, you know, maybe I say, oh, it's seven, you know, oh, I can almost hit that purple gate. How about a, an 11? Oh, look, I hit the purple gate, right. but it didn't help me because I missed the other gates. Yeah. So, you know, these are the kind of things that students can do to help figure this stuff out. And it will give them an opportunity to practice linear equations like uh, without, without making it a worksheet, without making it boring. And I, I like that it gives them a chance to test things out and play around with it. It's not – you get one chance to answer and that's it. It gives them multi, so if they don't get it right, it gives them instant feedback that I didn't get it right that time. And by just by watching you change different y-intercepts, I'm able to see that, you know, you were able to go between the blue gates to the purple gates, but we're gonna have to change that angle of our line, that slant somehow to get all three. So that would take the student to changing their slope. So they're able to see what's changing about their linear equation. I like that. Right, and it's asking them about slope. What did you have to change? You know, what yeah. What did that change do? You and know, see, I might wanna slope. add in a way for them to explain how, you know, how did you get your final answer? Maybe on a separate screen, uh, do some reflecting on it on the next slide or. And you can do that. You can actually do that on this slide or on the other slide. You can actually say, have students explain their answer. So it's really cool. And if you ever want to see a couple other details, there's teacher moves here, and it gives you um, basically kind of a how to incorporate this into what you're doing. And then it also has some sample responses in case you need those. And these are for you to see, not for your students. So this is okay. yours. And then you just close those out and they stay down there. And that's all there is to it. I mean, you can you can build a very rich activity very, very quickly with the activity I like builder. This. this is great. Yep. So and one more thing, I'll show you show students their classmates' responses. You can show up to three responses of students of your classmates if you want them to be able to collaborate with each other, you can do that. Or you can say ask students to explain their answer. You click on that, and that does what you said, Beth. Without having to put in a whole other slide, you can say, hey, can you explain that to me? How did you know that it was, you know, negative 2x plus 7 or whatever? Very nice. So I like that. See, I was thinking just like the Desmos team. Exactly. Exactly. So the nice thing is this is automatically saved in my account, so I have it whenever I need it. All right. So to get out of here, all I want to do is click on the Desmos D, and I'm back. And then if you go over here to customs, you will see. Yep, it's right there at the top. There's my copy I made. And so I click on that. And then all I need to do when I'm ready to share with a class, if I want to share with one class, I just hit create class code. Boom, do that. And voila, I have a class code. 7EXPDG is created. And now I can have my students doing it and I can do what we, showed last time we can go in and take a look at what they're doing where they're doing it and that gives us so much more information on how well they're grasping the concept of graphing linear equations I like this this is definitely better than you know 10 similar problems on a worksheet uh, even if I just sat there and played with that airplane you know for five to ten minutes that I think is gonna help me understand what's happening with that linear equation more than five dry problems on a worksheet. So that's great. Yep. And your idea of having them follow up and ask, how did you get that? Mm -hmm. Is going to be mm -hmm. important too, because it gets them to be metacognitive about what they're doing, yeah. their ability to think about it and be able to 
you know, go, oh, I did that because I was able to change the y-intercept or I was able to change the slope. And depending on where your students are in development, you can say, yeah, I, you need to use slope, you need to use intercept, or you can say, I changed the first number, I changed the second number on their first go round. Mm -hmm. So. And this is great because the ones that you showed us are, they're kind of like playing a little game. Um, so yep. it's more interactive, you know, more likely for your, at least I know our middle school students, they love to play those games. So it's definitely more interactive for that age group. And almost every one of these I showed you has infinite correct answers. So you don't, you know, it's not, they're not gaining an answer, but they're getting to a success point. I like that. Very good. Any all questions? Right. Um, I think I asked all my questions. If you all have any additional questions, please put them in the comment section and we will be happy to answer you via comments or if we need to, we'll pop up another weekly web find and dig deeper into the areas that you're curious about. So thank you, Andrew, very much for joining us uh, for welcome. our web find. And we'll see you next week for another new find. Sounds great. Take care. Bye-bye.